and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Beloved, if you seek the Lord, if you search for him with all your heart, you will find him. We often spend so much energy. We spend so much effort and time seeking things, seeking people, seeking money. We expend a lot of energy seeking affection, seeking approval on all kinds of things, things that are temporary, things that will pass away. But today, saints, my message to you is that we need to seek Jesus Christ. Before you seek the things of this earth, call on the name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus Christ. I encourage you to seek protection under the lion of the tribe of Judah. Seek tranquility from the Prince of Peace. Seek God Almighty, the one who is, who was, and who is to be. I encourage you to seek, to call, to chase the one who commands millions of angels, the one who speaks and creates. Call on the one who has the keys to life and death in his hands. So whatever situation you face today, whatever circumstance or situation you're up against, God wants you to call on him. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Psalm 50 verse 15 says, Call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. And so I want to encourage you. When you look at God's word, when you look at his promises, he says, trust me in your times of trouble and I will rescue you. He says, abide in me and I will restore you. He says, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So let your hope be found in God. He has the perfect solution each and every time. So call on him, whether it's day or night. And so with this understanding, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, my Lord, and Savior Jesus Christ, my Redeemer and the Good Shepherd. I come before you today with a humble heart and my faith lifted up. Your name is set high and above all other names. Thank you, Lord, for your amazing and your endless love. I praise your holy name today And I acknowledge that you alone are God. Yours is the power and the glory and the honor. Thank you, Father, because you are faithful to equip me with all that I need. You are faithful to have given me the resources that I need to walk with boldness and authority in this life. Your wisdom is unparalleled, and your power is unmatched. You are a God who provides us with all that we need, with more than we need, above and beyond all of our expectations, whether it is healing, restoration, protection, or peace. We look only to you. We look only to you, Lord Jesus. When I'm weak, Lord, you're strong. So I pray that your Holy Spirit may empower me. May I have an open mind as you reveal heavenly things to me and guide me to walk in the path of righteousness. I invite you, Holy Spirit, to be my counselor and my friend. Set me free from my wayward tendencies and desires as I look to build a relationship with Jesus Christ. Free my mind of everything that seeks to hamper or slow my development as a believer. Free my mind 
from all constraints of stress or depression. For I've not been given a spirit of fear, but of love and a sound mind. As I embrace your presence and power, I ask that my life will reflect my journey with you. You are a God who has always been faithful. Whenever I needed healing, I found it in your arms. Every time that I have felt empty, I have found wholeness in your presence. And I thank you, Lord, because even when I have felt lost, you've been closer than a brother. You've been a lamp to my feet. May you give me the strength required for each day. May the Holy Spirit lead me into a future that is rooted in Christ. I pray that you would renew, repair, and revive my heart, my mind, and soul. I speak peace into every area where there is unrest. I pray for closure in every area that has any voids. Let nothing of this world unsettle my heart. I declare your word over my life and I say greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. I say my God shall supply all my needs. I say that nothing is impossible with my God. I say that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I thank you for giving me the strength to overcome the devil. I thank you for giving me the power to walk in victory and the power to defeat sin. It all comes from you. So I bless your holy name. I humble myself and I surrender all that I am to you. I trust and believe that you will redeem me and you will make me whole. Grace upon grace is what I will experience in my life. In Jesus' name, I confess that all is well within my soul. All is well within me. I confess that all is well in my life and in my home. May the Holy Spirit grant me boldness and courage. May he help me to be strong and firm in faith. I pray that I will not be found to be fearful in any area of my life. I pray that I will not be a believer who is oppressed by worry, by anxiety, or by stress in Jesus' name. Father, I claim your word and say surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. I have victory in the name of Jesus victory over any evil victory over every goliath i declare that i have victory over the obstacles set by the enemy through the power that's in the blood of the lamb power that allows me to overcome daily to be blessed daily to wake up in your grace and mercies each day Thank you for hearing my prayer. Thank you for hearing my prayer, King Jesus. Amen. If you were to search for the definition of the word commitment, you'd find that a commitment is defined as an agreement or pledge to do something in the future. A promise to do or give something. The state or an instance of being obligated or emotionally impelled. Now, from these definitions, I want you to pay attention to some of the words that are associated to the meaning of the word commitment. A commitment is a promise. A commitment is a pledge. A commitment is an instance of being obligated. The Bible calls for us to be committed to Jesus Christ. 1 Kings 8. Verse 61 says, And may your hearts be fully committed to the Lord our God, to live by his decrees and obey his commands, as at this time. Take a moment to really decipher what this verse is telling us. Your heart should be fully committed to Jesus Christ. 
Your heart should be obligated, compelled to follow Jesus Christ. Your heart should be wholly devoted and completely loyal to the Lord. Psalm 37 verse 5 says, Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Have you committed your way to the Lord? Saints, I want to encourage you to make a decision. A decision to commit your ways to Jesus Christ. Be someone who is loyal. Never to be found with a wandering eye. Don't be found giving anything less than your all to the Lord. Make a commitment to Christ. Make a commitment that you will take action regarding the things of the Lord. Take action today. Don't wait until tomorrow. Don't wait for someone to lay hands on you. Take action concerning your relationship with Jesus Christ this day. As for me, well, I've decided that I will trust. I will praise I will pray and I will worship Jesus Christ today and forever. I'll give my all. I won't hold anything back. I will be loyal and wholly devoted to Jesus Christ. I'm not waiting for a convention. I'm not waiting for the blessing or the miracle. I'm trusting the Lord today. You see, tomorrow is not promised. Today. While I still have breath in my lungs and strength in my bones, I will put my trust in Jesus. I'll commit my ways to him. As long as I'm living, as long as I have a voice, I will declare that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Today, I boldly declare that I will, I will, I will put my faith only in Jesus Christ. No one else could rescue me. No one else could offer me help but Jesus. So I'll call on the name of Jesus Christ today. I'll call on his name tomorrow and every day after that. Whether I'm on the mountaintop or I am deep in the valley, I will call on Jesus Christ. He is always faithful. Now let's pray. Lord Jesus, your word in Proverbs 16 verse 3 says, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. Father, in obedience to your word, I commit everything to you. I commit it all, Lord. The plans I have made, they're in your hands, Father. The goals I've written down and all of the things that I want to achieve, I commit them into your hands. Father, in agreement with everyone under the sound of my voice, we commit our ways to you. We commit our lives to you, Lord Jesus. Our families, our children, our marriages. We commit it all to you, mighty God. Take control and have your way. Let your will be done in our lives, God. May the Holy Spirit lead and move within our hearts and our homes so that we may do that which is pleasing in your sight. Father, in committing all that I have to you, I am saying that I submit to you, Lord Jesus. I trust you, Lord. I believe in you, and I believe in your word. Lord Jesus, as I commit everything to you, as I declare my loyalty and devotion to you, I also submit my thought life into your hands. I submit my heart's desires to you. Reshape my thinking, Lord. Let my thinking be aligned to the word of God. Let my heart's desire be pure in your sight. This world may try to get me to conform to its ways, but I pray that you would give me the strength to overcome the temptation of the world. Friends may try to entice me so that I can conform to their sinful ways, but Lord, I pray that you would give me the strength to overcome every temptation. May I be so committed to following you, Lord, that nothing in this world would take my focus or draw my affection. Lord, I will not fear the unknown because my eyes are continuously fixed on you. I pray and declare Psalm 16, verses 8 and 9. 
I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. I will not be moved by any situation. My heart is filled with gladness and joy because I'm under your care. Lord Jesus, I may not know what tomorrow has in store for me, but I do have faith that whatever the enemy means for evil, you, Lord, will turn it around for my good. I may not know what tomorrow has in store for me, but I do have faith in you as my provider. I trust that you will be my safe place. Be glorified in my life, Lord Jesus. I'm at peace because I know who my God is. I'm at peace because I know who my source is. I'm at peace because I know who my protector is. Lord, you have my focus. You have my attention. I look to you and you alone for direction, for strength, and for comfort. I praise you, Lord Jesus, for all that you've done. And I praise you in advance for all that you are doing and that which you are still yet to do. I thank you for your grace and mercy. And I thank you for hearing my prayer. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. The Bible is clear about many things. It's clear that God is a jealous God and we are not to have any idols. The Bible is clear that Jesus Christ died on a cross and rose again. The Bible makes it clear that there is a heaven and there is a hell. The Bible also makes it clear that there is a day of judgment to come. But one of the things that the Bible tells us to do is to acquire knowledge. Proverbs 18 verse 15 says, An intelligent heart acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. Think about what this verse is saying. Those who are intelligent, those who are prudent and discerning, they seek to acquire knowledge. But why? Why is knowledge so important? Well, Hosea 4 verse 6 in the New King James Version says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being priest for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. Saints, we need knowledge concerning the authority that we have in Jesus. Because when you lack this knowledge, there's no way that you can walk in dominion. There is no way you can walk in victory because you would have no knowledge of who you are in Christ. We need knowledge and wisdom because a lack of knowledge can result in you being deceived. The Bible tells us that even the devil transforms himself into an angel of light. People with a lack of knowledge will see signs and wonders and think that it's a move of God, not knowing that the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 9 in the Amplified Translation, the coming of the Antichrist, the lawless one, is through the activity of Satan, attended with great power, all kinds of counterfeit miracles and deceptive signs and false wonders all of them lies. When you have a lack of knowledge, you will believe anything and everything. You'll follow any doctrine, accept any teaching, and be drawn by any miraculous sign. However, to guard yourself against this, the Bible says in Proverbs 1, verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Saints, in order to gain knowledge, you have to invest time. You have to invest effort in seeking the Lord. You have to seek Him in prayer. You have to seek Him in His Word. I believe that there are things, there are lessons and deep revelations that God can only reveal to you once you begin to chase Him with an intensity. 
Once you commit yourself to seeking the Lord and seeking his presence, God will show up. This is why Jeremiah 33 verse 3 in the New King James Version says, Call to me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. So I encourage you to equip yourself with the knowledge that is in the Word of God. I encourage you to sincerely ask the Lord for wisdom. Ask Him for understanding and for knowledge. The Word of God warns us that people perish because of a lack of knowledge. Don't let that be you. James 1 verse 5, it says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Now let's pray. Lord Jesus, I humbly bow before you, Master. At this time, King Jesus, I pray that you would bless me with wisdom. Give me knowledge and understanding, Father. Let me not perish because of a lack of knowledge. Your word tells me that if I lack in wisdom, I should ask you, for you are an all-knowing God. So, King Jesus, I'm asking you, help me to be wise in all my ways. Help me to be wise when it comes to the company I keep. Give me wisdom regarding my choices. Lord, I invite the Holy Spirit to lead me in all of my ways. May the Holy Spirit teach me the ways of the Lord. May he teach me how to walk in righteousness. Father, your word in Isaiah 11, verse 2, it says, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. I pray and declare your word over my life. May your spirit rest upon me, Lord, a spirit of wisdom and understanding. I pray that you would help me to be wise, even though I am a sheep in the midst of wolves. Father, I pray that your spirit would rest upon me a spirit of counsel and might, a spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would have mercy on me. If I lack spiritual insight, would you please open my eyes and ears so that I may walk by faith and not by physical sight. Your word in Ephesians 5 verses 15 through 18 says, Be very careful then how you live not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Father, help me to walk carefully in your ways. Give me the grace to live a life that honors you, a life that is careful to shun away those who tolerate and enable evil. Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that you would help me to keep my heart with the utmost diligence so that I can make the most of my time here on earth. Help me to make the most of the life that you've given me. Help me to make the most of the gifts and talents that you've blessed me with. Lord Jesus, may I do all things for your glory. Lord, give me a heart that's filled with humility so that I may exalt you with all my actions. Father, indeed the days are evil and the morals of this world are corrupt. However, I sincerely desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit lead me to forsake my carnal and foolish ways and may he lead me to walk in the path that's filled with purity and wisdom. Be praised, Lord Jesus. Be praised from now and forevermore. Thank you for listening to my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
I am Val Demings. I'm the daughter of a maid and a janitor who became police chief. Protect and serve Florida, that's what I've done. Now I'm running for Senate to give every Floridian the same opportunity to live the American dream. A prayer for anyone who needs strength and faith at a time when you do not know what tomorrow holds. I want to speak over your life and remind you that the watchful eye of the Lord Jesus Christ is upon you. The hand of the Almighty God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, His hand is on your life. He is watching over you. He will be the one to guide you. He'll be the one to lift you up when you fall. He will keep you in His loving arms and He will give His angels charge over you. He's a God that will keep you so that no misfortune may befall you. He will ensure that no misfortune may befall your family. I pray that the Lord gives you strength and wisdom. I pray that you will always remember all that he has done for you, even when life sends you a test. I encourage you to hold on to the knowledge that God will continually protect you and he will never leave you or forsake you. His light will surround you. His love will overwhelm you. His power will protect you and his eye is forever watching over you. Wherever you are, may God's presence be found to be guarding you. So whatever it may be that's bothering you today, you have the privilege to call on the name of the Lord. Regardless of what your circumstances may be, your certainty is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 12, verse 12 says, Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. And I love that the Amplified Translation says, Constantly rejoice in hope because of our confidence in Christ. Steadfast and patient in distress, devoted to prayer, continually seeking wisdom, guidance, and strength. It's encouraging and it's uplifting to know that God can use that which was intended to harm you by the enemy. And instead, he will use it for good. The arrow that was sent to cause damage in your life, it is the very same arrow that God will use to propel you to better. You see, God uses our troubles to remind us that he is a deliverer. He uses our troubles to bless us even. So I encourage you to trust in God's faithfulness. He will empower you to stand strong, to be victorious and never to be defeated. We have the victory in the Lord and our hope should be firmly placed in Jesus Christ. Now let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are a holy God. You are a righteous God. You alone are the one who moves mountains and causes walls to fall. Lord, regardless of everything happening around me in this world, I take comfort. I take confidence in the fact that you are sovereign. You remain firmly in control. You are still on your throne and you are still a good God. One who will never leave us nor forsake us. You are a God who makes a way when there seems to be no way. And Lord, if I should be surrounded by the enemy and if I should find that a multitude of problems are chasing me, I will call on the name of my Savior, Jesus Christ. And I know that you will turn things around. Father, I ask that you would split the sea of uncertainty before me. Split the sea of anxiety and doubt. I pray that you would speak the words, peace be still, during any storm I face. Lord, we trust in you to be the solution. We trust in you to be the chain breaker, to be the way out for whatever it is that comes against us. 
I pray for anyone who may be listening right now, anyone battling with feelings of uncertainty. May you give us wisdom and clarity of mind. Your word says in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 33, that you are not the author of confusion, 